Taoiseach, in four weeks' time, the emergency ban on evictions will end. From April, hundreds of people will face the prospect of losing their home. Single people, couples, parents with children and pensioners will become homeless. In many local authorities, emergency accommodation is already full to capacity. The system Taoiseach is at breaking point. In Dublin alone, 60 single people and 100 families from the county are in emergency accommodation in Meath and Kildare. And from April, we are not only facing an increase in people in emergency accommodation, we are facing a rise in rough sleeping and under Tusla's rules, the prospect of families with children being referred to Garda stations for a safe place to sleep. Taoiseach, just let that sink in for a moment. In a wealthy country with tens of thousands of vacant homes and hundreds of millions of unspent government capital funding for housing, children will be forced to sleep in Garda stations. And why is this happening? Who is responsible? Well, the short answer, Taoiseach, is you. Last night, you, Micheál Martin and Eamon Ryan took a decision to allow homelessness to increase. You took a conscious decision that will force more single people, more couples, more parents with children and, yes, more pensioners into homelessness and, in some cases, into tents and into Garda stations. And let's be very clear, last night no other actual new or substantive decision was made. No additional measures to prevent people from becoming homeless in April. No emergency measures to increase the supply of much needed social and affordable homes in the short term. Just a cold, blunt decision to end the ban on evictions in four weeks' time. What a heartless, cruel and shameful decision. When the emergency ban on evictions was introduced last October, we told you it was not enough. We urge you to use the breathing space it provided to take emergency action, to expand the tenant in situ scheme, to expand it to affordable cost rental, to use emergency planning and procurement powers, to target vacant and derelict properties and new building technologies, all of which for the purposes of increasing and accelerating the delivery of social and affordable homes. But Taoiseach, you chose to ignore us. You did nothing extra. And now, because of your inaction and your decision last night, homelessness will increase. Once again, Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil and now the Green Party have abandoned renters. You are throwing them to the mercy of a totally dysfunctional market, a dysfunction created by 11 years of Fine Gael in government, propped up, of course, by Fianna Fáil for the last six years and now joined by the Greens, and whose leader, by the way, has been accused by his own dull colleague today of abandoning his party's values and policies. Together, you have allowed rents to rise and keep rising. You have failed to deliver an appropriate volume of social or affordable homes to rent or buy. Year after year, you have missed your own social housing targets, targets that weren't sufficient in the first place. And as a result, uh, people uh, are in huge housing stress. A generation locked out of home ownership, crippled by sky-high rents, trampled uh, in cramped flat shares, stuck in the family's box bedroom, struggling through long, exhausting commutes and languishing on social housing waiting lists. And now we have the spectre of people being forced to emigrate because they cannot access an affordable home. So Taoiseach, my question is very simple. What are you going to do to prevent ever more people becoming homeless when you end the eviction ban in April? And what are you going to do to increase the supply of social and affordable housing to invert the ever-deepening housing emergency? Please. Uh, Deputy, um, the government today decided that the temporary eviction moratorium uh, would end on a phased basis as planned and previous announced, previously announced from the end of March. It was a finely balanced decision. Uh, there are pros and cons, but we made a decision which we believe is in the overall public interest. Uh, why? For three reasons. 
Uh, first of all, the moratorium was not effective in reducing homelessness. The number of homeless people being provided with emergency accommodation by the state increased every year or every month for, for which the moratorium was in place. Uh, secondly, it was beginning to create a new form of homelessness, people unable to move back into a property that they owned, unable to move a son or daughter into an apartment that they bought uh, for that purpose. Uh, 20 to 30,000 Irish citizens return home every year. Um, most do not own their own house or apartment, but many do. Uh, and extending this uh, for another six months or another year would not have been fair or right to them. Uh, and we also extended it. And this is a crucial point uh, because we believe that leaving it in place uh, would have reduced the availability of places to rent and would have driven up rents further. Why? Because it would discourage new landlords from coming into the market, who we need. We've lost 40,000 in the past five years and it may cause, once ended, uh, more and more landlords to leave. Uh, so it would have been bad for renters uh, in our assessment uh, to extend uh, this eviction ban, especially those uh, moving uh, or those seeking to rent for the first time. And let me explain that perhaps in a bit more detail. Uh, we know from DAFT reports, from RTB reports, for example, that for the vast majority of renters, people who have uh, tenancies or are sitting tenants, rents increased by about 3.5% last year. And that's because of the RPZs and other measures. However, when it comes to new tenancies, new properties coming, becoming available for the first time to rent, rents are skyrocketing. And that's because there aren't enough available. There are too few new properties coming on the market to meet demand. And we believe uh, that extending the eviction ban, extending this moratorium, would have meant even fewer uh, properties coming on the market. Why? Because people who have a property to rent uh, would be afraid that they would never be able to get, get hold of it again uh, or control it again. So we believe, on balance, that it's in the public interest to do this. Uh, one, because it wasn't bringing down homelessness. Uh, two, because it was creating a whole new form of homelessness, people not able to move back into their own homes, properties they owned. And third, it would make uh, fewer properties available in the future, thus making rental properties less available and pushing up rents further. That mightn't be correct, that mightn't even be the right decision, um, but it is a decision that we believe is correct uh, based on all the factors uh, um, uh, in front of us uh, and is the one that we believe uh, is in the public interest. Um, homelessness, a number of people in emergency accommodation provided by the state has been rising now every month for quite some time. Uh, we accept that it may well continue to rise uh, in the months ahead. However, we think the decision that we made today um, increases the chances that we can get homelessness down in the medium term to the long term whereas extending it would do the reverse. It might have given us some respite for a short period ahead, but actually would have made things much worse uh, in the medium to long term. And Deputy, just to correct you on one crucial point, we made a number of decisions today uh, to alleviate the situation, a number of important decisions today. Uh, first, we decided that local authorities will be funded to purchase up to 1,500 homes from landlords that are selling up so those people uh, can avoid homelessness. There are roughly 1,600 homeless families in the state. The fact we've decided to buy 1,500 homes from landlords selling up so that people don't become homeless is a significant decision. Uh, we also decided that private tenants would be given the first right of refusal if their landlord is selling up, as is the case in France, and we'll help them to buy uh, when they can't afford to do so. Uh, and we also decided to lease an additional 1,000 uh, social housing units, particularly targeted at those who are homeless. There is no pro to being in emergency accommodation, sleeping in a tent, or having to bring your children to a guard station. And you say the ban on evictions wasn't working. In fact, it was your government that wasn't working. The reason why the last ban on evictions was so effective is because exits from homelessness rose. In the last year and a half, under your watch and Darrell O'Brien's, exits from homelessness have collapsed. You say that the ban was creating a new form of homelessness. Well, I tabled an amendment to the bill last October that would have addressed that, and this government didn't support it. And you say uh, that if you continue the ban on evictions, it would reduce uh, the availability of rental stock. The very opposite. Once you end the ban on evictions, landlords will continue to leave the market. They've been doing it for six and seven years, and they will continue in the time ahead. And with respect to your target for tenant in situ, we know what Dara Ryan does with his targets. He makes them and he breaks them. He makes them and he breaks them over and over again. In my own local authority, over 100 homes have been offered to South Dublin County Council in tenants in situ in the last year. How many have been bought, Taoiseach? Three. 
So please, don't come here and tell us you agreed anything new last night. You made one decision to end the ban and increase homelessness. What additional emergency measures for April will you put in place to counteract the never, negative consequences of your own decision? Um, thanks, Deputy. There were about 2,700 exits from homelessness last year and 3,000 preventions. And the reason perhaps why there were more exits from homelessness during the pandemic is because of the restrictions on domestic and international travel. Uh, there was simply more accommodation available uh, with people not coming into the country and tourists uh, not taking up that accommodation. So there are many other factors at play during the pandemic that helped to reduce homelessness. And that is now very evident. Uh, the fact that the moratorium was not effective in bringing down the number of people homeless in the past six months uh, proves that. A decision that, that we've taken, Deputy, I outlined earlier. Um, we are authorising local authorities and will fund them to do it uh, to purchase 1,500 homes this year. So if a landlord is selling up, if they have a social housing tenant on HAP or on RAS, uh, the local authorities will be encouraged and enabled uh, to purchase that property so the person doesn't become, or the family doesn't become homeless in the first place. We're going to give private renters uh, the right of first refusal and help them to buy. Um, won't work for everyone, but will work for some. We've also decided to lease an additional 1,000 social homes uh, to prevent people or, or to accommodate people who are coming homeless. And we've also signalled very clearly uh, that there will be uh, tax measures in the forthcoming budget uh, to encourage landlords to stay in the market and encourage more to come in, because there will always be landlords leaving. But there is zero entering now, and that's a really big problem and something we need to address.